Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! My grandparents are kinda wealthy. They don't look like it, but they are. They live in a nice farmhouse and they lead a fairly peaceful and quiet life. Their youngest son, my uncle Ted, in his 30s at the time was dating a woman that we will call Karen for the sake of the story. No one in our family liked Karen. She was a condescending, entitled woman who didn't leave any of us any room for doubt that she was dating our uncle just for his parents' wealth. She was a certified gold digger, and he was just an idiot for not seeing it even though most of the people in our family told him so directly and indirectly. At one of our family gatherings, she didn't mind making a terrible comment about how after my grandparents die, my uncle will get everything since he's their favorite. She even said she can't wait to put her hands on my grandmother's stacked jewelry box that my uncle told her about. And then when the room went quiet after what she said, she tried playing it off as a joke and said, Oops, did I say that out loud? My bad. Oh, come on, everybody. I was just kidding. The whole atmosphere got extremely awkward after that and people just started leaving kinda early since they didn't really want to be around her anymore. After that day, my grandparents called two of their three sons and one daughter and asked them to visit them to discuss an important matter. And they decided to exclude Uncle Ted from that meeting. Once all of them got there and sat down, my grandfather started telling them that he gathered them today to take action regarding the woman their brother is dating. He started with, No one has a right to interfere in someone else's private life. No one has a right to break up a relationship between two people as long as they are not harming anyone else, even if everyone around them doesn't like what they are seeing. Everyone quietly nodded and kept listening as my grandpa continued. However, I have every right to protect my children if I ever feel they are harming themselves one way or another. Then Grandpa proceeded to tell them his plan to put some of the people lurking around his family to the test. A couple of weeks after that one meeting they had, he called his sons and daughters and told them to come to his farmhouse with their families, since he has a big announcement to make. And this time everyone showed up including Uncle Ted and his entitled girlfriend. Grandpa started with how he hasn't been feeling so well lately and how he feels that his day is nearing. It got really serious right off the bat. Everyone in the room got tensed up, well, except for one person. One stranger that has been waiting for that day to come ever since she set foot in this house. Anyways, Grandpa continues with his announcement. Due to my health issues, I consulted lately with my lovely wife and my lawyer and I decided to write down my will and divide my inheritance between all of you. Karen's eyes lit up as any talk about her future fortune brings her nothing but joy even if it was at the cost of our beloved grandparents dying. Then grandpa says, but what I want to do a bit differently is that I want to be the one to announce how I'm going to divide my wealth. I don't want you to wait for after my demise to know what you're going to get. If you're getting something from me, you're gonna know it right now. Then his lawyer hands him his will and he proceeds to read what's written in it. After what seemed to be an eternity but didn't actually pass 10 minutes, my grandpa folded his will and ended it with, This is how I decided to divide my wealth while I'm of perfect sound mind. It was quiet after that for a long moment. I mean, Grandpa, you left a huge elephant in the room. Every single one got something of value from your inheritance. Everyone. Except for Uncle Ted. Uncle Ted looked confused and didn't really know what to say. He was a really good guy and he loved his parents and they too loved him, but he was just a little bit too naive for his own good. But while my uncle stayed silent without saying a single word back to his father, his Karen of a girlfriend did not. She got super red in the face and exploded. Are you freaking kidding me, old man? What the hell does that mean? Why won't you give anything to me? I mean, to us? Grandpa told her, Well, it's not up to you to tell me what to do with my own money. That's what I see fit. 
and that's what's going to happen. Period. She kept screaming and threatening everyone around her until she was kicked out by my other uncle from the house. While Uncle Ted just followed her outside, tucked her into his car, and they drove off. Poor Uncle Ted. He doesn't deserve what Grandpa did to him, but more so, he doesn't deserve to be with someone like that horrible woman. And that's how that meeting was concluded. Suspiciously, no one talked about what happened. No adult asked my grandpa about the reason why he excluded Uncle Ted from getting a share of his inheritance. Everything just seemed too quiet and life returned to normal the very next day. Well, except for Uncle Ted. All it took was a few days after this one, explosive meeting, for his gold digger girlfriend to dump him since, well, she won't be able to put her hands on his parents' money anymore. Her staying with him, acting like she loves him, made no sense after all of that. And so, she broke up with him. All of us tried to feel bad for the guy after the breakup, but we couldn't help ourselves but to feel extremely happy for him that he got rid of that gold digger. We're really ecstatic that we're not going to see this woman again during family gatherings. In the next family gathering, Grandpa had us all sit down again and he just started mind-blowing everyone again. Told us how the whole thing about his inheritance was something he came up with with the help of my grandma to figure out if Karen was going to stand by his son right when he had nothing or was just going to bail on him once his parents' money was out of the equation. And now that this is a question we all have a clear answer for, then of course he's going to redivide his inheritance to include his beloved son Ted this time and exclude no one from it. And that he never actually had any health issues to start with. He was just getting deep into the play he was cooking and wanted to nail it. Oh, come on, Grandpa. Of course, Uncle Ted had mixed emotions hearing this, but in the end, he came along and he and Grandpa shared a long hug that got some of us to shed a tear or two. And there you have it. A happy ending to a fairly long story, right? Nope, there is more. It gets better. It seems that Karen couldn't just take the ill and be on her way. She couldn't swallow that bill. Could have let all these months she dated my uncle go to waste. She wanted something out of it. One night, my grandparents woke up to their dogs going off barking like nothing else. Right in the middle of the night, Grandpa grabbed his pistol and just went out to see what's causing this ruckus. And there she was, Karen trying to fend off the beasts attacking her. And once she sees my grandpa, she screams at him to help her and order these dogs to get away from her. It took my grandpa a moment to realize who she was. And when he did, he told the dogs off and they stopped going after her and sat down near their owner. He then asked her, what are you doing here? At first, she tried to deny what she came for by making up some lame excuses about how she missed them and came to visit at 3 in the morning. But after my grandpa threatened her to call the police, she confessed that she came here to grab what she could from that jewelry box she heard so much about, and that she earned what's in it, and that he should compensate her for all the time she spent with his pathetic son. And right when she was about to finish that sentence, she heard the shotgun cocking come from behind the man that stood in front of her. It was grandma, and she was pissed. One quick thing to know about Grandma, she's an angel, truly one of the most loving people I've ever known. But you surely didn't want to see her pissed because may God have mercy on your poor soul if you got her angry. She tells her, you tricked my son for all this time, stole all of his money, lost him all of his friends and broke his heart. And now you dare come here to my doorstep to steal some more? Oh, I don't think so. I learned later from Grandpa that he was on the verge of letting her go, but that was before Grandma showed up. You just don't argue with her when she's in that state. She then points her shotgun at Karen, orders her to lay on her stomach, puts her face in the mud, and stands over her while asking Grandpa to tie her hands behind her back with the roughest rope he could find until the police arrive. They shall be here in a few minutes. I called him already. She tells Grandpa. Ten minutes later, the cops arrive, put the Karen in handcuffs and take her away. All the while, she wailed and shrieked like she lost her mind. And that was the last time we saw her. 
I remember hearing about her getting some years in prison for breaking and entering, but I didn't know specifically how many years she got. Let me just say that I have one of the most badass grandparents anyone has ever had. Hey there. I'm not usually one to share stories on this platform, but I've got a crazy tale that happened during my vacation in Germany last week. I'll admit right off the bat, English isn't my first language, so bear with me. Here's the scoop. It started when my aunt asked for money to fund her college education. Now don't get me wrong, I'm all for helping family out, but this situation was a bit different. You see, my aunt had already received financial aid from my dad and uncle in the past. They extended their hands to support her in pursuing a degree, but she never quite finished college and never paid them back as promised. So when she came to me seeking financial aid, I had to put my foot down. I told her I couldn't help her out this time, which led to a big blowout argument. To avoid further drama, I decided to cut contact with all my relatives who attacked me on the family group chat. Life was relatively peaceful after that, or so I thought. With the project I had been working on finishing earlier than expected in late May, I decided to plan a much-needed vacation in Germany. Part of the planning involves deciding who would take care of my house while I was away. I settled on my 19-year-old brother who could stay in my place for free as long as he looked after everything. Trusting him was a responsibility, I jetted off to Germany eager for some relaxation. Now, here is where the story takes a wild turn. While I was enjoying my vacation, I received an unexpected WhatsApp call from my brother. He sounded alarmed and told me that he had discovered our aunt car park next to my house. That alone was odd because she wasn't supposed to be anywhere near my property. Concerned, my brother went to investigate and found that she had broken into my home. She had forced her way in by breaking the door and it was clear that she was rifling through my belongings, likely searching for something valuable to steal. What she didn't know was that my brother was temporarily living in my house. She must have thought it was empty. My brother confronted her and demanded that she leave immediately. He even threatened to call the police and our dad since he didn't want to deal with the cops alone. But my aunt was unyielding. She insisted that I owed her because, in her mind, my refusal to help her had forced her to take out loans to continue her education. She believed it was my responsibility to pay off her loans since I hadn't helped her back in January. Prostrated and feeling cornered, my brother followed through on his threat and dialed the police, simultaneously sending a message to our dad to inform him of the situation. Realizing that the authorities were on their way, my aunt reluctantly retreated to her car and sped off. By the time the police and my dad arrived at my house, my brother had already provided them with a detailed account of what had transpired. He also had camera footage to back up his claims, showing how my aunt had broken in, rummaged through my belongings, and caused significant damage to the place. The police took a copy of the footage and assured my dad that they would handle the rest of the situation. They promised to keep him updated on their progress, and my dad acting on my behalf was relieved to hear this and thank my brother for handling the situation so well. Meanwhile, I was left feeling utterly shocked by my aunt's actions. The damage to my property was extensive, including my beloved TV, PS5, a portion of my cherished game collection, my gaming PC, and various other items that had sentimental value to me. And to make matters worse, some of the games she had damaged were old favorites of mine. Titles like Pokemon Coliseum, Pokemon Platinum, Shin Megami Tensei, Digital Devil Saga, Shin Megami Tensei, Nocturne, Persona 3, FES, Resident Evil 4, and many more. It was a devastating blow to my cherished positions and the memories associated with them. I couldn't believe that my own aunt was capable of such destructive behavior. It cast a shadow over my vacation, and even though a week had passed since the incident, I couldn't shake the feeling of disappointment and sadness. As I prepared to head to France, my next destination, I hoped and prayed that there wouldn't be any more bad news waiting for me. I just wanted to salvage what was left of my vacation and enjoy the remaining days. 
My journey to France began with a train ride and I couldn't help but hope for a smooth and uneventful trip. Little did I know that this ordeal was far from over. I pressed charges against my aunt for the extensive damage she had caused to my property. I wasn't about to let her off the hook for what she had done and if any member of my family chose to stand against me, I made it clear that I wouldn't back down. The next day, I had a Zoom call with my dad's lawyer to discuss the legal proceedings. Thankfully, they were able to arrange for me to participate in a trial via Zoom, sparing me the need to return to my home country in person. My dad would be present at the trial to represent my interests as well. During the call, my lawyer and I discussed the possibility of seeking compensation from my aunt for the market value of the game she had destroyed. Many of these games were for older systems like GameCube, DS, PS2, and PS3, making them difficult to find nowadays, especially in my country, since most of them have been in excellent condition before the incident. I believe it would be reasonable to insist on either new replacements or, at the very least, used copies in good condition. The trial was scheduled for 12th of September and the anticipation was both nerve-wracking and infuriating. I couldn't fathom how my own flesh and blood had pushed things to this point and I was determined to see justice served. There will be a big update coming soon for my story. Stay tuned for it. Hey everyone, I wanted to share a little story that happened at my dad's pho restaurant not too long ago. We've been serving delicious balls of pho for the better part of a decade, and like many restaurants, we had a loyalty program. Customers could get a punch card that once they filled it up, they would get their 10th ball for free. It was a nice way to show appreciation to our regulars. Now let me tell you about this one customer, the entitled man who managed to ruin the program for everyone. It's not the first time someone tried to pull a fast one, but he took it to a whole new level. About a month ago, our server started noticing something fishy. There was this guy who seemed to be getting a lot of free meals almost every other time he came in. It didn't take Sherlock Holmes to figure out what was going on. This dude had gone out and bought a whole bunch that matched the one we used at the restaurant. You see, the free ball only applied to a medium-sized foe, and this guy always ordered a large with his free ball. So technically, he still had to pay the difference, but hey, he was getting away with it, and that didn't sit well with my dad. My dad, being the clever guy he is, told the servers to start saving this guy's punch cards and stapling the merchant copy of his receipts to them. We were building our case, gathering evidence against the entitled foe bandit. After this guy got three free balls in just two weeks, my dad decided that he had had enough. He calmly handled the guy's bill, thanked him for his visit, and then dropped a bomb. He told him that we would no longer be accepting his punch cards as it was clear that he was abusing the system. Well, you can probably guess what happened next. This dude, who thought he was the smartest guy in the room, made a huge scene right there in the restaurant. He started yelling, claiming that we were cheating him out of his rightful free meals. To make matters worse, he even called the cops saying that we were failing to provide the services promised. Now, I am no legal expert, but I wasn't sure if this was even something you could press charges over. But my dad, ever the calm and collected one, didn't want to deal with this nonsense. He welcomed the police when they arrived and calmly explained our side of the story. The entitled man, on the other hand, was all drama and pluster. He insisted he had every right to those free meals and that we were trying to rip him off. But my dad had the evidence, the punch cards, the receipts, everything. After hearing both sides of the story, it didn't take the cops long to realize who was in the wrong. Now, I'm not sure if this is even something one could press charges over, but my dad still decided to have the man trespassed. We're waiting to see what will happen with those charges. Dad ended up cancelling the free ball program and instead servers keep track of some of the most frequent customers so they still get something for their loyalty. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.